Welcome back to Power BI Helpline. Let's use new window DAX function to calculate dynamic ABC classification in Power BI. If you are new to the channel, then please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified. Let's check it out. With ABC Pareto classification, we create three categories such that Class A products are those products which holds 80% of the sales or profit values. Class B products are responsible for 15% and then Class C product shares are just 5% of the total sales or profit. These percentages can be adjusted based on requirement. Such analysis is very useful when you want to take data-driven decision to promote your products, which are more profitable, or remove some of the products, which are not adding any values. We are going to create this functionality in Power BI using our brand new Window DAX function. Let's jump into a new Power BI file. Here I have just product name and total sales. I will first create a useless running total measure and will show you what is the actual problem in this. As explained in our previous videos, I will create this running total measure using window function. Both the position parameters are zero, but one is absolute and another is relative. It is able to calculate the running total, but it is ordered by product name, not by the total sales. And if I sort by total sales, you can see, it is no longer calculating the correct running total by sales in descending order. In our measure, we cannot use a measure in our order by function. One way we can use a measure by creating a virtual table which will also have total sales column, but we won't be able to change our position parameter type to relative, and we will be bound to use absolute, which not useful in this case. So, I will create a total sales column inside my product table. I am adding a new column sales by product. To take care of any circular dependency, as we explained earlier, you can use all except function in calculated columns. Now since this column has a physical lineage, I can use this inside my order by function. And our running total measure will start calculating correctly ordered by total sales. This is just one part because at very first, we need to calculate running total by sales. Now we are ready to start implementing our actual solution. Before that, let me change this measure name from useless to useful running total. The next very important step is to create a custom table. I will name this custom table as product classification. And I will just mention new product class names A, B, and C, which will be used inside my next important measure. I will drag these classes in my top row header, under which I need to keep product names. Let me now create the master measure of this entire solution. The name of this master measure will be classification filter. I will create three variables. In this example, my class A is holding 80% of the total sales amount. So, in this variable, I will multiply with 0.8 and then also apply remove filter function on product names so that all the products will be counted. Class B is 15% and class C is 5%. I can copy the same variable and change the percentage to 0.95, which 15% added to the 80% and then next 5% will take you to complete 100% of the sales. In my return statement, I will check if the running total by total sales in descending order crossing 80% of the total sales, then those all corresponding products will be in class A category. And so on for class B and C with 15% and 5%. As that you can see, if selected value from the product class is A, B, or C, it will validate the same conditions as explained. Since this measure will just return true or false Boolean values, and I won't be able to use this inside visual level filters, I will wrap the entire expression inside and in function so that I will get one or zero values. Now I will select my matrix visual and apply a visual level filter with this measure and select its value as always one. With that, we will be able to see that our matrix visual is correctly showing all the classes A, B, and C with relevant sales amount and the product's names inside it. Now the last thing is to calculate the number of products. For that I can simply create a measure with distinct count of products. But if you create this measure, it will not only show number of products on class level, but it will also show one against each product inside it, which I don't need. Because we only need to count the number of products on total level or each class level. To resolve this small issue, I will use a condition with is in scope function. So that, if products alone are in scope, then it will count blank, but on class level or grand total level, it will count the number of products. This solution is now ready to use, 
and you can start using this. If required, you can add some other slicers from the product table like brand, and then slice by each brand to check which all products and selected brands are responsible for 80% of the sales or profit, or which are the products which are not adding many values. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel for many such interesting solutions in Power BI. Post your feedback and suggestions in comment box.